Hi everyone! Today we will be working in InDesign, which is the program you will use to create layouts and PDFs to plot or submit. We will be working to create a couple master pages and a character style for your daily documentation. So, when we open to InDesign, a box prompts you to choose what kind of file you want to begin working with. We are creating a document, so click that option. Another dialog box comes up asking you to specify the size and number of pages. For this, you will have a drawing for each day of the week, so we are going to choose letter size. We are going to keep it in portrait, but we are going to change the number of pages to 7. We are also going to unclick the facing pages checkbox, which would have the pages paired up as in a book. You should also know that even though the height and width are presented in picas, you can type in the number in inches with the suffix and then it knows to convert that. So we're going to click OK. So the rulers along the side are also in picas, but we can right click and change that to inches if that helps you understand your document size. If the rulers do not show up automatically, you can find them under view and then it's rollers or control R. As in Photoshop, you can zoom in and out using the shortcuts Control, plus and minus. But one of the wonderful things about InDesign is that if you have an element selected and you do that Control, plus and minus, it will zoom in with the focus on the element that you have highlighted. You can also use the magnifying glass in the toolbar to draw a box over the section that you would like the screen to zoom to. Now, when you're working with several different elements, it becomes useful to utilize the Layers panel to keep your file organized. The command to create a new layer can be found here. In order to change the layer of an object, simply drag this little square to the desired layer. You should see the outline of the objects change colors based on the layer it belongs to. Once your layers are organized, you can lock one layer in order to select objects based on their layer. One incredible thing about InDesign is the guidelines that pop up that help you align different elements in your document. You can also create your own permanent guidelines by dragging down a line from the ruler. These automatically do not print, but if they distract you, then you can just create a new layer and move them to that one, and then turn it off and on as you need. There is also an option to show a grid over the entire document, which can be found under View, Grids and Guides, and then Show Document Grid. If you need to change the spacing or intervals or other preferences pertaining to this grid, you can find that under Edit and then Preferences. In the Pages palette, you have the option to create a template that you can apply to several pages. This is called a master page and can be created by clicking here and then New Master. You can insert objects or text that can be applied to show up throughout the rest of your document by just inserting them once on this master. For example, we can create a master page called Master Tuesday through Sunday for each of the days in which you scanned a sketch. On this, we can put the assignment in the bottom using the text tool. So that would be daily documentation. as well as a text box for the date and the description of the particular drawing. Now we can take this master page and apply it to pages 2 through 7. And now you see all of them have that same little text box. But the wonderful thing about master pages is you can include even things that changed, like the date or the description, because you can hold down Control and Shift and then release a certain element or text box from that master page to customize it. 
All right, now we're going to make another master page. And we're going to call this one Master Page Monday. And on this Monday Master Page, we are going to include all the elements on the, on the Tuesday through Sunday Master Page, as well as our names and a short reflection of a couple sentences. So in order to apply the same things from the Tuesday Master to the Monday, we right click on the Monday Master, click Master Options, and then we want to base it off on the Tuesday through Sunday Master and hit OK. So now this Monday Master has all of the same text boxes as the Tuesday through Sunday Master. And then we can add our name and a short reflection. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to fill this with arbitrary placeholder text, which is basically just nonsense. And then we're going to apply this Monday Master to the first page. A key tool that will make your lives easier is the Character Styles tool. That can be found under Type, Character Styles. In this palette, you can develop different font styles with different characteristics from color to size to font to apply to different master pages and text boxes. So let's set up and apply two of those. We want to create a new character style and we're going to call this one Document. Uh, let's call it image information. And we want to have this one, perhaps we can choose a font type that appeals to us. And then we could make it perhaps nine point font. And then click OK. And then we are also going to make another that we want to call reflection. And we can take the basic character formats, maybe leave the same font, but then we want to make this one slightly larger, perhaps 11 point font. We can also change the character color, and so we can choose any of the colors here. Um, and if I want a gray, I would just take the black and change the transparency. So a nice gray would perhaps be 70%. Hit OK. Now we want to apply these character styles to the different text boxes on our master pages. So we're going to click up here to get to our master pages. Simply select the text box and then click the character style that you'd like to apply to it. You can also use the actual command by right clicking and saying apply this character style. In order to get to the text boxes that are tied to a different master page, we either need to release them or go edit them directly from their master page. Play with these tools to develop your own unique format. Choose a font that you find appealing but not distracting. Move the labels to where they make sense to you. I wouldn't use a font size larger than 12 point font as you don't want to detract from the work that you're scanning in, but play with the tools and customize your layout to your preferences because you'll be using it for the semester. Once your pages are all formatted and set up, it's time to insert your scanned images. Using the command place up under file, choose your file, and then click open. You have the option to drag it to the size you want, or you can just click and it'll come in at its full size. The shortcut for place is command D. When you need to scale your image once it's already within the document, you can do so by dragging the corners. Understand that the blue outline is the frame and that the orangish yellow outline is the image itself. And these can be moved and scaled and warped individually. Now, some life-saving shortcuts when scaling are the control key, which when you're holding it down, scales both the frame and the image together 
and the shift key which holds the aspect ratio as you scale. When you hold both of those together, it makes scaling a lot easier. When looking at your document, sometimes when you zoom in, files will appear extremely pixelated. When you go up to view, then down to display performance, you see three options. Fast display just shows them as blocks. High quality display shows you the placed files at their resolution. So as you can see, they're much clearer. But a lot of times if you have a large file, it'll slow down the program too much to navigate simply. So it's usually best to keep working within typical display, but occasionally switching to high quality to double check and make sure the image itself is not pixelated, only its representation within the program. Another helpful tool under view is the screen mode. In preview, the outlined boxes do not appear unless you click on them, but this mode gives you a really nice idea of what your final product will look like. Once you're content with how it all looks, you double check all your text, it's time to save the file. You want to save first as an InDesign file, as we did with Photoshop, for your personal use, but then in order to submit, you want to export to PDF with the high quality print. You should name it whatever file format Carmen has provided for you. Then click Save. It'll bring up another options box. And you can basically just leave things as they are. Spreads would be if you were printing a booklet. But sometimes it's useful to click the PDF after exporting so that you can double check your document after you submit it. And then click Export. It will pop up and you can double check all your different pages and then save it to the proper folder and then you're all set.